In this part of the workshop, I will be discussing the workflow for the Vector3 imaging system. Just a quick recap, the Vector3 imaging platform can accurately detect and measure weakly expressed and overlapping biomarkers in a single FFPE tissue section. The method allows the use of antibodies raised in the same species and also the detection of low abundance proteins. This slide shows an overview of the Vector3 imaging workflow, which I have divided into four main steps. The first step is to image and build your spectral library in InForm. The second step is to set the exposure settings for each of your slides. The Vector3 microscope is then, then performs a low resolution whole slide scan. After selecting the regions of interest using Phenochart, the slide is rescanned at high magnification to acquire the multispectral images. And the last step is to perform the spectral unmixing in InForm. The first step in the Vector3 imaging workflow is to build your spectral library. You need to acquire two to three images from each of the single opal fluorophore, DAPI and unstained autofluorescence slides that, you, that you have previously stained on either the Bondirex or manually. Make sure to use all the epifluorescence filters relevant to that opal dye. For example, DAPI should only be present in the DAPI filter, therefore all other filters should be set to 150 milliseconds. You then navigate to the Build Libraries tab in InForm to extract each opal fluorophore spectrum. Then save to store each fluorophore spectrum, preferably with a colour that will make it easier to discern in composite view and with a meaningful group tag. And lastly, you assess your library unmixing performance. Here we have the raw spectral image for Opal 650. And as you can see on the graph on the right, there is an emission peak in both Texas Red and Sci-5 EpiCube filters. And here we have the extracted or spectrally unmixed image with CD45 RO cells shown in white. On the right, you can see the emission spectra with the main peak in the Texas red channel and a smaller peak in Sci-5. You need to repeat this step for each of your opal fluorophores and your DAPI and autofluorescence slides. The following slide shows a standard spectral library generated in form with DAPI, FITSI, Sci-3, Texas red and Sci-5 filters and good spectral emission separation in each graph. The next step is to set your exposures for each slide. The table on this slide shows the exposure recommendations for each of the opal fluorophores. The signal bands for DAPI and each of the opal fluorophores are shown by the coloured boxes. When imaging a monoplex slide, say with opal 520, you only need to auto-expose in the FITSI channel. However, if you're using Opal 570, you must auto-expose in both Sci-3 and Texas Red filters. Similarly, with Opal 690, you need to auto-expose using the Texas Red and Sci-5 filters. If you are imaging a 7-plex slide, you must auto-expose using all five EpiCube filters. When no fluorophores on the slide emit within, within the current signal band, you need to set the exposure exposure time to the default settings, which, are, which is 150 milliseconds for MSI and 40 milliseconds for whole slide scan. Exposure settings need to be set and saved for each slide. The only exception to this is if your markers are being assessed for staining intensity, in which case you must use the same exposure for all of your slides in your study. For optimised panels, exposure time should range from 50 to 200 milliseconds for MSI regions. Make sure to always enable saturation protection. This protects again against unexpectedly bright signals by reducing exposure if necessary. Inform then adjusts for differences in exposure times at each wavelength in unmixing, ensuring results can be compared between samples. Also, always ensure that you use the lamp at 10% power for imaging your opal slides. For each marker, move to an area that contains positive cells and use the auto-expose button to determine the exposure for the epifluorescence filter corresponding to the emission maximum. Repeat for all filters until the exposures are determined. The image shown on the bottom right is that of a colorectal tumour stained with an immune panel comprising seven markers. You can see that we have exposed in all the epicube filters and that the exposure times, exposure times fall approximately within the desired range. After your exposures have been determined and saved, it is time to image your slide using the Vectra. The first step in the scanning process is to perform a whole slide scan of the entire fluorescent slide at times 10 magnification. The resultant file has a QPT extension. 
The user then annotates the overview scan using PhenoChart to identify the regions for high power multispectral imaging using the Vectra. PhenoChart is a freely available software that allows you to view and navigate around whole slide images and to select areas of interest for further review and multispectral imaging. The following slide shows a whole slide scan of a piece of human colorectal cancer stained with a T cell panel. When selecting your regions of interest, you can use the ROI tool, which allows you to draw a region of interest for imaging. It creates stamp annotations corresponding to the regions you draw. This may be useful when you want to acquire multispectral imagery for a specific region on your slide. The edges of the tissue should be excluded from the annotation as they are likely to cause artifacts. On this slide, we selected the whole tissue section for multispectral imaging and it consisted of 279 MSIs, which would have an acquisition time of approximately 140 minutes. Alternatively, if you have a very large tissue section and are only interested in acquiring certain regions of your sample, you can use the stamp tool to select your MSIs. You have the option of a 1x1 stamp, a 2x2 stamp and a 3x3 stamp, which is equivalent to 9 MSIs. The annotated regions are then rescanned at 20 times magnification in a multispectral multispectral fashion at 20 nanometer intervals between 420 and 720 nanometers to acquire the MSI regions and these have an IM3 file extension. The next step is to perform your spectral unmixing using the Inform software. So using Inform's unmixing engine, the high resolution MSI files acquired by the Vectra are unmixed to separate the spectra of the overlapping opal fluorophores used in your monoplex or multiplex slide. An unmixing algorithm is created per slide by choosing several representative MSI files and then these undergo batch analysis to generate component TIFF files which are exported into HALO for image analysis. The component TIFFs are then merged in HALO to create the fully scanned tissue at times 20 magnification. The following slide shows a raw opal image of an FFPE piece of human melanoma tissue stained with an immune panel comprising of six antibodies. This is an image overlay of the 15 images acquired by the Vectra LCTF camera which captures fluorescent spectra at 20 nanometer wavelength intervals from 420 to 720 nanometers with identical exposure times. These captures are then combined to create a single stack image which retains the unique spectral signature of all of the markers present in your multiplex IHC panel. And then if we have a look at the channels individually, here for DAPI, which is the nuclear counter stain, you can see the spectral curve shown on the right with a peak in the DAPI filter only. Here we have opal 520 labeling CD3 positive T lymphocytes in red. And on the graph, you can see there is an emission peak in the FITSI channel only. CD103 cells were labeled with opal 540 shown in yellow. And here we have emission peaks in both FITSI and Psi3 filters. T regulatory cells were identified with the FOXP3 antibody and OPAL 570, and here we have emission peaks in Psi3 and Texas Red EpiCube filters. SOX10 positive cells were identified with OPAL 620, which shows, shows an emission peak in the Texas Red channel and a smaller peak in the Psi3 filter. T helper cells were identified with OPAL 650 and a CD4 antibody, and here we have emission peaks in both Texas Red and Psi5. And lastly, OPAL 690 and a CDA antibody were used to identify cytotoxic T lymphocytes shown here in green. And the graph on the right shows an emission peak in the Psi5 channel and also in the Texas Red filter. And finally, this show, slide shows a spectrally unmixed composite image showing all seven colors or the distribution of each of the biomarkers simultaneously in the tissue section. The informed spectral library that was used is shown on the right. From this image, you can quantitatively evaluate the locations, co-localizations and spatial relationships of the various biomarkers used in this panel. When performing your spectral unmixing, it is always a good idea to inspect the simulated DAB view for each of your targets using pathology view in Inform. And as you can see in the micro, uh, photomicrographs on this slide, each marker is depicted as a chromogenic IHC, which is a view more familiar to you. And the last step is to perform your batch analysis of all the MSI files corresponding to each of your slides. 
This generates your component TIFF images, which can then be exported into Halo for image analysis. And my colleague Meta will talk about this part in more, data, more detail in the next presentation of the workshop. So just to summarize the Vector3 imaging workflow, the first step is to image your single stay and control library slides using the Vectra and then to build your spectral library using Inform. After setting your exposures for each slide, the Vector3 imaging platform is used to scan the entire fluorescent slide at times 10 magnification. The whole slide image is then loaded into FINA chart for manual annotation of your regions of interest, after which the slide is rescanned at high magnification to acquire your multispectral images. Inform software is then used to perform the spectral unmixing of your MSI files, which are then batch analyzed to generate your component TIFF files, which can be exported into Halo for image analysis. Thank you for listening.